One word. Is, is the moment a minister sells out to Satan. Brother, I'm telling you, the moment you add one word to the, to the complete word of God or you take it from it, and you and you and, and you begin to water it down. And you say, "Well, you know what? Well, that well, that was for Paul's day. Well, what they actually mean there is this, and they just start twisting it. And well, let's get this. Uh, let's get the NLT version, the NIV, the this, this, that, and the version. Let's just start. Oh, it sounds a little different there because it waters it down. It makes. Oh, there you go. That's not what Jesus. You know, and, and you 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 just added to the word and took away from it. You sold out to Satan. Yeah." Because that's what Satan is. He's an education. He's, he, he's, he's intelligent. He just deceives you. He's, as I say all the time, he's religious. He's in your church. Now, don't ever add or take away from God's word, elect. Stay with the elect. If it cuts you, then say, Jesus, let it cut me and help me to surrender. Help me, Lord Jesus, to totally surrender to this word. Amen? Because sometimes there's things that come down from your mother, that little rebellious spirit that mom had, that little stubborn spirit that mom had, or whatever it come down from grandma, and you're battling that lady. Or same with you, man. It comes down from your father, down to you, and so forth. Jesus Christ is gonna, wants to break that off you, brother and sister. Because if, if any, anything that keeps you from the word of God, it's not of God. May the Lord Jesus help you overcome to stay with his word. Now, <clears throat> let me take a drink here. I, uh, hmm. I've been for over an hour already talking. I, um, now, yeah, okay. <laughs> Let me get focused here, guys. Now, Revelations 22. And I, I was like, going to say, I was, I was not, maybe anything I was going to preach this week. I did an eight-parter. And I mean, I was losing my voice, so y'all could tell. Um, and the Lord is, the Lord does not leave me alone. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just working for Him. And the Lord began to deal with me on this message. Literally, as I, like I said, I was preaching it, it began to stir on me. And then it just, it just hung with me so heavy. So heavy where we're at and what God wants me to bring out. So here I am again. Amen. Now, you know, by the way, we had Bible study again Monday and we had a little bit bigger turnout. And I just, you know, we had a great time. We've been reading scriptures about healing and miracles and we had prayer together. It was a couple hours together and uh, it was a beautiful time. So looking forward to what the Lord has for us this Monday. No. <clears throat> and thank you, sister, again, this lady who's uh, commented on the last message. You know who you are. Thank you. God bless you. Revelations 22, verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. What's it say, folks? You add. He adds the plagues to your life. Any man take away from the words of this book. Of this prophecy. God shall take away his part out of the book of life. And out of the holy city. And from the things which are written in this book. He which, for, he which testifies these things. Because folks, when you, start getting, when you start going down that road, Mr. Preacher Boy... Or, or lady, for you too. Do you realize that the demon spirit is now coming to your mind because he's in Satan's in intelligence and education? And he begins to get you to dig into all this educational stuff and all, let's do this and let's look up that, and all this education and knowledge, and you educate yourself right away from the Word of God. That's what Satan does to you. Stay with the Word. Ask God to reveal it to you from his spirit, not education. Now, he would testify at these things, saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, <laughs> come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now, I wrote down here, The Holy Spirit 
beginning to stir my spirit deep this deep this week of how close we are to the rapture and Satan becoming incarnated as what takes place in Revelations 13 and Revelations 12. I seen the Senate discussing, think about this folks, I sent this to one of my uh, subscribers today. Um, you know how much I mean, you mean to me and our friendship we developed. <laughs> so uh, I sent this to her. That this has been put out. I mean, we've all kind of heard the terminology court packing or whatever. I know Trump was talking about it at one time. But in April, it was, it was an article where, think about this. The United States is in Revelation 13. And we preach it. If you all listen to my ministry, I preach about these things, okay? Revelation 13, 13 stripes, 13 colonies. All these things, 13, 13, it's all over. Revelation 13 is the United States chapter. She's the lamb in the Revelation 13 with the two with the two horns, civil and ecclesiastical powers. And she's the one that I talked about before, who 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 as 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 the, the Pharisees needed the church needed a needed a, a beast power, a political power to to exercise the crucifying of our Lord Jesus Christ. Spirits don't die, history repeats itself. Satan's got Satan's moving forward his agenda and the last day. But it's gonna be like you've never seen in this time, folks, I'm telling you. And Satan's going to use the power, the beast, the Antichrist of the United States. It's right there in Revelation 13. To exercise and fulfill the, the killing and the death of, of believers. During the tribulation, the, the foolish virgin, those who, re, who rejected the word, those who went ahead and held on to their beast church system, but then all of a sudden, who, who, who were Christians, but didn't go on and get the Holy Ghost and stay with God's complete word, and held on to their system and their church and how much, oh, I love my church, I love my church, over Christ the Word, Christ the Word, Christ the Word, they will have to literally give with their life and be killed during that time. And it's, folks, we, I mean, folks, we are, it's it's already, it's emotion. It's emotion. There was a time you used to think about someday that's coming. It's, an, it's happening. We're living it right now. Now, the Senate was even discussing this today. My brother called me today and he, he, he even said he was watching this on the news. And I was like, really? And I started Googling it up a little bit, but they're wanting to add four more justices, supreme justices. Folks, that's 13. United States, Revelation 13. The beast, your antichrist, your mother of harlots. We're going to, we talk about stuff over and over. She needs that she needs that she needs this, the, the power to execute her laws and her plan as what takes place during the tribulation period. So that, think about that. So it's be interesting. I'll be watching this now. My dream that I had, lightning from heaven. I had this past, uh, last week it was, and I saw a great storm coming, and I saw a great lightning. See, I saw it coming, because it's coming. I keep having reoccurring dreams, folks, of a great storm that's coming. But this was a great, massive lightning bolt coming down from heaven, down. And I wasn't, again, I had no fear, because God has established me by His grace in His complete word. Amen. Now, Luke 10, 17. The Lord revealed this to me earlier as I studied the scripture. Because, it's a, again, it's the Holy Spirit that reveals the word to you. And God uses, the, uses truly called ministers. And I, by the grace of God, I want to be, I want to, be to the very end. I've, I, that, that's, all, that is, that's all the testimony that I want for my life. That's it. Period. That God brings the true word through his, through his ministry. And then God, the Holy Spirit, then takes it and opens it up your understanding and reveals it to you. We, we talked about that Bible study on Monday. We were sharing things in the Word, and God was speaking. And, 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 and then all of a sudden, like even you know, my sister was there, and she's like, oh, I caught that. I said, there you go. God, the revelation came through, through the channel, of, through the ministry, through, through, a, through, a, through a man who's got that Holy Spirit working in his life. And then you caught it, and you received it too. Amen. That's how God does this. Now... Luke 10, 17. This is what God hit me earlier. And the 70 returned. And remember, this is, we read this last week, where God sent the 70 disciples out, all the disciples together, Judas with them, to go out and preach the gospel, do miracles, do all these great things, right? All these men, gifts, the anointing. God's, God's going to anoint them and give them gifts and anointing to go out and do this. Catch this. Saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us 
through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld as lightning from heaven. Oh, I'm sorry. I beheld Satan as lightning from heaven. Look at the correlation here. God sends them out to ministry. They're doing great. They're doing a great work for the Lord. Okay? Now catch this. What's the first thing Jesus says he sees taking place? Satan as lightning from heaven fall from heaven. Now, let me finish reading this and I want to share my thought here. Okay? Now behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I put it here in a note. Our Lord Jesus knew what Satan would do in his agenda. See, God see, looked there and he saw Satan. As soon as the, this, they come back and, and this great movement of God is taking place, he sees Satan coming down like lightning from heaven. Because, folks... Satan, I've just preached, I'm just, I just preached this. I'm going to reiterate it again. Satan studies the, the ministry. He stu there's these gifts and callings are put there from God. And he studies these people. And see, and God, and see, see, Jesus, who Jesus Christ is the Word. He is the complete Word. He saw what Satan's agenda would be. That Satan would say, I got I got to press myself in here somehow. There's this great thing going forth. There's this, this God's got these men here that he's, he's anointing and they're doing great things. I got to push myself in and get amongst these men. I got to get amongst them and deceive them. I got to get my own ministry going. I got to have my own church. I got, I got to get, I got to get my amongst them. I got to deceive. Some, I got to somehow work that I can slip in here that I can then begin to deceive. And I can use these same men who are God, who got God's anointing on their lives. See, God saw it. The Jesus Christ saw it. Oh, here, here comes Satan. Man, I see him coming down. He's going he's gonna to put his whole, his whole target on the ministry, on these men, and begin to try to see who he can, who he can get his diatrophist, as, as, as we talked about before, and my, his Judas, who sells out. And all these different things, he, he begins to look for his ministers. Men who will begin to say, you know what, okay, I'll sell for education. I'll sell, I'll, they'll, they'll begin to, he'll begin to talk to their mind. I tell you what. You can be you can become the leader of this church. Think of the think of the congregation size here. Think of the money you can make. Think of the opportunities. Think how popular you would be. And and those ministers, Satan falling like lightning from heaven, coming down, and these ministers go ahead and submit themselves. And and, and Satan begins to use the very gift that God put in their life. Yeah. Now, he knew here. Our Lord Jesus knew what Satan would do. His agenda would use God, would use God called men who then would sell out and in the end would be lost, as was Judas. We preached that last week. They start off. Their gifts and callings, the Bible says, are without repentance. You're born with it. These men get begin to get God working in their life, and Satan fall, comes down like an like lightning from heaven, wanting to inter, intercede him, interject himself. And ultimately, in the very end, when the bride goes up, he becomes completely incarnated in the Antichrist. And folks, we're talking complete incarnation. Total complete. You think it's bad now? You don't want to be here then. Because Jesus, the mercy seat's done. He's left. It's just Satan having full, rampant control. There ain't no Holy Ghost there anymore to protect you there, brother and sister, preacher. Yeah. You you will you will die your death. You will you will give your very life, or you will just or you will just go right along with the beast and keep selling out, and then you'll be eternally lost. Period. It's time now. End time evangelism, as I preached last week. You better get it right now, brother, and repent. I don't care who you are. You better repent now. Because remember I showed you all last week, Satan, Judas had his name written on the book of life because it just says right here. But in the end he was lost because he sold out. Satan like lightning coming down. Ah, ah, I'll get a hold of this one. I'll get a hold of that one. I'll, 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 present, I'll present something to well, sometimes well-meaning good men of God with good intentions. 
they sell out. They sell out. And they and, and, and end up lost in the end because of it. Now, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 1. I would to God that you would bear with me a little in my folly. Take a drink. And indeed bear with me, for I am jealous, I am jealous over you, he says, with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband. One. One husband. That's it. This is it. He's your husband. Jesus Christ, the word, him revealing himself, the revelation that comes from it. That's it. The relationship. Selling out, dying to yourself, taking up your cross, daily walking with him. Period. Period. If you're the poor, no matter what, you stay with the word of God. And who cares, folks? You sell out for him, the complete word. He's espoused you to one husband. This that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ, he says. What's going to make keep you pure is the word of God. Gold tried in the fire. But I fear. Oh my goodness. I, I, folks, we all battle the devil. I'm battling too. I just told you all at the beginning. We're all, none of us are above it. Excuse me, but you're a, you're a free moral agent to make your choice. What are you going to do with this Jesus called Christ? You're going to crucify him again openly before your church, before your family, by rejecting him and changing his word to suit your iniquity, your agenda? Yeah. He's espoused you to one husband, Christ the word. Now, but I fear lest by any means as a serp as a serpent, as a serpent, as a serpent, as a serpent beguiled Eve. And we preached before, back in Genesis. Satan added one word to God's word. Just the word not. Thou shalt not surely die. He added one word to it and twisted it. And it caused every 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 ambulance you hear today. Every child that, that you hear about, little aborted babies that go forth every day. Every person who you hear about dying of cancer. Every sickness and heartache and pain. Because one woman who was deceived by the serpent accepted his deception by him adding one word to it. And what did we read a minute ago? Revelation, adding and taking. What happens to you? Folks, this is, you, you take it lightly. Because right now, see, Satan's got you. Say he's the deceiver. He's got you set up to think you're okay in your system and the way you think this works. And he's going to set you up till, till you miss it and keep setting you up and you run right through it to very, the very point you end up, eternally, end up eternally lost because you let him fool you and deceive you and you made a choice to not stay with the word and not lead your home and, tell, and help guide your wife and guide your kids and tell them what the Word says. Now, they have to have their own experience. You can't get them the Holy Ghost. can't. They have to get it themselves. You can sow the Word and try, hope, trust that God at some point will give the increase. Amen? That's all you can do. Now, but I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his, through his subtility, like that dream I had, education, smart, intelligent. Oh, he's so deceiving. That's what he is. So your minds, your minds, your minds, your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity, the simplicity that is in Christ. The simplicity that God can call you to preach, give you the Holy Ghost, reveal His Word to you, and you can just stay with that Word and preach right from it. And not, not the simplicity of just staying with the Word of God. Period. Staying with the simplicity of the Word. That's it. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom you have not, whom we have not preached, he says. Or if you receive another spirit which we have not received, or another gospel which we have not accepted, you might well bear with him. For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest apostles, but though I be rude in speech. 
yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest, manifest among you in all things. I drop down to verse 13. For such Satan falling down as lightning from heaven. The disciples are going out doing all these great miracles and they're preaching the gospel, doing all these things. And it's Jesus the Word says, oh, here he comes. Here comes the devil. He's going to do what? Verse, verse 13. <laughs> Such are false apostles. Right here in my country, the United States is a country loaded with false apostles. Deceitful workers. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Yeah. But, oh, I love my church. They got the best, like I talked about before, the best worship team and all these things. This is verse 13. Where's the United States found? Revelations 13. What's, Satan's, what's Satan lightning down from heaven? What's he coming down using? What's he going to incarnate himself? We're going to show it here in a minute. He works right through the church. We talk over and over and over. He incarnates himself. He has his false apostles, his false teachers, his false preachers, his false pastors, amen, his false prophets, his false evangelists. For no marvel, for Satan himself, the enemy that comes against you, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. I have shared this story before, and I'm going to share it again. Satan appears as an angel of light. I was 18 years old. I just got the Holy Ghost, still living at home on a mission for the Lord. Amen. And my sister at the time, the devil was after her. I'm not we'll just make this kind of get to the point here. She was in a she was in a great battle. I remember having a dream and I saw in the dream everything that was going on in her life in that situation. I saw it in a dream. And I was like, "Man, why did this why am I having this dream? You know, you don't, you know." So, but in the dream, I see myself first. Um, I see. I see first. Uh, I'm in a prayer, like a, I'm in a prayer group or something like that. But I see one, also in this dream. I see a, a angel, white-looking spirit, um, come out of my. It's been a while. Okay, I'm talking eight down at forty-five. But coming out of my, at the time my cousin was living there, it followed her out of her room and went right back to where my sister's room were, was. And I could see in the dream her door move a little bit. And I'm sitting on the couch as I'm looking down the hallway from this view. I come home that night from the prayer meeting. That's what represented the dream. Prayer, prayer meeting, come home. And my mom is right away said, Paul, Paul, there's a bad spirit in this house. Something ain't right. I've been having demonic thoughts in the kitchen. Something telling me to kill myself. I said, there's something ain't right. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit and the anointing of God came on me just like that. And I knew I had to go right straight to that room. And, and, and I knew. And she, and she told me, Christina, my sister, was going through some situations and things like that. It was going on. Satan was attacking her. And me, all I want to know, my mom's name is Bernice. I, don't, I never mentioned her name. My dad's name is Bill. Anyways, they're my parents, so I don't mind saying those are my family. These people that I that I love, that I have a story with. Um, but anyway, so and um, so anyway, so so that that situation takes place. But what I'm trying, I'm trying to. It's it's, it's a story that what, what I want to show you all something here. Is that my sister ended up telling me what was going on, how Satan was attacking her. And, and, and she could see this, like, a white-looking thing. It looked like an angel of light, like, coming against her and trying to grab her. And she was having thoughts of suicide. All this crazy stuff was going on right there in my parents' house. And I went back to her room, and, and, I, and I remember seeing in the, in the dream that there were spirits all over the wall. Well, she had posters, like, Vamp, Brad Pitt. She was young. And, folks, I was 18, so she's probably 13 years old. You know, it's young. you're young. You're a teenager. And... 
these posters, Brad Pitt interview with the vampire, and I right away I said, I said, Mom, every, all that all that stuff now has to come off the wall now. That's what that represented the dream. The spirits all over the wall. That that that, that type of stuff and the music she was listening to, music, different things had brought them demon spirits. But it was an angel of light. It was a white. It wasn't some dark looking thing with red horns and pitchfork. Satan is an angel of light, folks. He's an angel of light. We prayed over that night, and the thing, God worked through the prayer that he put, the gift and anointing he put in my life, and we prayed, and that devil got out of there right then and never came back. Never had a problem with it again. We cast him out in Jesus Christ's name. You watch what you put on your walls. If you got kids, you watch what you put on your walls. You watch what the movies you watch. you you got to protect your home to let spirits come into your life, folks. Amen. Now, thank you, Lord. Amen. So, let's continue. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as... Now, he's an angel of light. So now, now he has his ministers. And his ministers become ministers of righteousness. Yes. Literal ministers of righteousness. So again, there's a, there's a temptation. There's a moment, preacher. And I say, keep saying preacher. It, it, folks, it comes to everybody. It comes to, right now. This is the part of the message I'm on. Okay? Where you are tested. You are, you are, you are given that great temptation. And you've got to make a decision. And, you, and, and, and when you decide to add one scripture to God's word and take one word from it to, to sell out, for, for, to be a part of some type of church or some agenda that you got, you are now becoming a minister. You're a minister of righteousness, but you're one of Satan's ministers. That is thus saith the Lord. You are one of Satan's ministers, brother. And you don't even know it. But you're being used by the enemy to, to, to preach the, Satan's gospel. By you, yeah, quoting scripture, just like Satan did to Jesus. You can quote scripture all day long, but it's not the revealed word of God by the Holy Ghost and fire, which comes by God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. The revealed, complete word of God is the difference, folks. Amen. Now, Satan's goal to be worshipped as God. Isaiah 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? I don't care if y'all... I'm preaching the gospel. I went, with things I went through this week, the devil's real, folks. And I'm going to keep exposing him. I will keep exposing him in Jesus Christ's name. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Yeah, fallen from heaven like lightning. How art thou cut down to the ground which did us weaken the nations? Yeah, weakens the nations. For thou hast said in thine heart, Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Expose that devil. Expose him. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Yeah. Wants to be worshipped like God. Wants to put himself above God. Amen. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the, above the heights of the clouds. I will be like, I will be like, I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They shall see thee, they that shall see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made this that made the earth to tremble? And did shake kingdoms? Yeah. The devil. That this guy right here? Who's got control of the every, every, the governments everywhere? All government, powers, principalities, everything, the church. Sports teams, the adultery, rock stars, music, <laughs> Christian music groups and leadership teams and churches all over the place. He's just shaking it all up, folks. 
shaken the nations in every direction. Thou, thou that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, even every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of the grave like an abominable branch, and at the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with the sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land, and slain thy people, and the seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise and possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will cut off, cut off from ba Babylon, Babylon the name. Remember the word Babylon. Remember that word, okay? So I'm going to get something here. And remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord, I will also make it a possession for the bitter and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the psalm of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. Satan is in education, as I just said, civilization, science, music, wealth, fame, all his. Genesis 1.17, and Cain knew his wife. Cain was a serpent seed. There was, there was, there was Cain and Abel. And I, I'm not going to go into all that. I preached that before, okay? But there's two seeds, folks. Satan came to Eve, got her added to the word. She partake of the fruit in the midst of the garden, which was sex, folks. There was a sex act that took place, and in the same, and then, then she gave it to Adam, and Adam partook, and right away they knew they were naked. Okay, two seeds were conceived, and two two acts, two separate sex acts in the same moment, producing two separate sons, Cain and Abel. Abel was of, of, of the righteous seed who had a revelation that it was blood. But Cain was of the religious seed and he brought the, the fruits and all these things as an offering to God and God rejected his, his offering because it's, it's, it's blood. Because Abel had the revelation and then Cain got jealous of Abel and killed his brother. So now Cain had a seed, but his seed was intelligent men, great big men, strong, tall men, great big men. Amen? I'm not saying all tall men are not Holy Ghost filled men, but I like to think us shorter men are... God looks at us a little, a little differently. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong being 5'10". Come on now. Amen. So, uh, <laughs> or 5'8", five, 5'7", five, whatever you are, brother. Amen. Now, again, I said there would probably be tall brothers out there listening to this. God gives all, it, no matter what your height is, folks, you get the Holy Ghost. Amen. But I'm trying to make a point here, okay? Satan's seed was a seed that was, as we read here, they were... Uh, um, if you got to drop down to verse 21, they were they were the harp. They they were they were they were talented music, musicians. Okay, they were they they had the harp and the organ. But Satan's seed ended up leading on down to the to, to Goliath. That's that was my point. Okay, that those big I'm talking giant dudes, probably seven foot, eight foot tall. I don't know. I don't have that again in front of me. But the the, the seed of, of of Cain's seed was an intelligent seed. It was an educated seed. Um, they were. They, it talks about how they, they were instructors of every 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 artist 